basically, you know, what's come out of the ACLU at this particular point in time is zero. Richard Fine has been languishing in jail for a year with no sentence, no bail, no recourse to gaining his freedom. The American Civil Liberties Union has long been known for supporting the oppressed rights of those victimized by an overzealous police and judiciary. Where is the ACLU today, and what are they doing to help Mr. Fine? Find out next on Full Disclosure. Relentless, probing, fearless, this is Emmy Award winning Full Disclosure with Leslie Dutton, bringing you the truth by revealing the news behind the news. Hello, I'm Leslie Dutton. Today on Full Disclosure, we're bringing you the news behind the news in this ongoing series about judicial benefits and court corruption, featuring interviews with the ACLU and Mr. Richard Fine from his cell in the Los Angeles County Men's Central Jail, where he's being held in solitary confinement. Mr. Fine has been fighting to win his release for an entire year filing writs and briefs from the California Supreme Court to the U.S. District Court and all the way up to the U.S. Federal Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. At every turn, we have seen unbelievable abrogation of court procedures where judges have completely ignored Supreme Court precedent and capriciously ruled against Mr. Fine again and again. Where could he turn, we ask him. Well, what about the ACLU? Do they have any power as jail monitors for the sheriff? I'm not sure what their powers are under the uh, under the decree of the case that they won that made them the monitor. Uh, judging from their letter, the only thing that they've done at this particular point in time is to go in and write a letter. On January 5th, Mr. Fine broke his upper dental plate, making it impossible for him to chew. He attempted to have it repaired by filing an inmate complaint with the sheriff, which, like all of his court filings, was promptly and completely ignored. Hearing of his plight, full disclosure asked longtime ACLU supporter Ed Asner to use his influence to convince the ACLU to intercede on Mr. Fine's behalf. He generously obliged, and within the next day, the ACLU visited Mr. Fine. On January 25th, the ACLU wrote Mr. Fine this letter, which is basically a form letter identifying him and his complaint, number 47952. They stated, It is reported that the plate in inmate's dentures broke, and he is unable to eat. Please ensure that inmate receives proper dental care and he is given food that he can eat. Being full disclosure, we wanted to see what the ACLU considered was their responsibility as a court-appointed jail monitor. So we took our cameras and headed to the Los Angeles headquarters of the ACLU. There we interviewed Mary Tiedemann, the ACLU's jail project coordinator, and Peter Eliasberg, the managing attorney of the ACLU of Southern California. Mary was familiar with Mr. Fine's predicament. Yeah, I saw him a couple of weeks ago and then I saw him again today actually, um, just to talk to him about uh, his medical issue and then he was having some problems with the complaint system. We asked Mary to define the scope of her work within the LA County Jails. What the Jails Project does is we monitor um, orders in the Rutherford versus Baca lawsuit, which is about uh, overcrowding conditions, and um, we also uh, deal with medical and mental health care issues that come up for people who are in the county jails. And how do you, uh, since you haven't seen Mr. Fine before January 25th, how was it? Do you monitor everybody or just some people? Generally, um, I mean, there are nearly 20,000 people incarcerated in the LA jails, um, and there are seven jails, and we um, just, based on, you know, where the problems kind of tend to, to be, we focus a lot on uh, Men's Central Jail, uh, which is downtown, which is where Mr. Fine is. But in doing that, we 
I mean, Mary and other people who work with Mary make regular visits to the jail, so we are, are constantly talking to people. We also get letters that we follow up on. We get phone calls that we follow up on. So I, mean, I think we see it as our mission to uh, monitor conditions for everybody, but you know, it's larger than most state universities who are in this jail. It's the largest yeah. jail system in the, in the country by far, and so it's our responsibility, but th it would be impossible and we don't talk to every inmate no. on a daily or weekly or even monthly basis. But we do respond to complaints and we also try to figure out ourselves what's going on by making visits. So it's not only complaint driven. Yeah, it is driven by going and, and looking and where talking. The, where the kind of issue areas are. And Mr. Fine was unimpressed by the actions of the ACLU. ACLU coming in at the monitoring of the health part, uh, sending a letter and saying if nothing happens within 10 days to call them or contact them. Your call may be monitored or recorded at a telephone number that is blocked. We asked the ACLU representatives why they block calls from inmates in the jail that they are supposed to be monitoring. Did Mr. Fine tell you that he tried to reach you at the phone number that was given to him to call you? Yeah, we talked about that. He was under the impression that it accepted collect calls and it does not, so that he had been trying to call it collect. And we can't, we don't accept collect calls right now. Another phone interview a day later, we clarified the inability of the ACLU to help Mr. Fine. You said that the, that the ACLU told you that they could not assist you with a court order? That's right. They said that they, that they could not do anything get me the court order. And uh, I said to them, well, basically, aren't you the ones that are supposed to really be helping me on this? And they said that they, they don't get court orders. While we were at the ACLU, we asked them to explain how they performed their tax-supported monitoring function on behalf of inmates such as Mr. Fine. Well, we sent the jail, the, the captain of the jail is the head person that oversees all the ins and outs of Men's Central Jail. So we sent him a, a, a letter requesting that they provide all the dental services that Mr. Fine needs so that he can, he can eat. He showed me the backs. He doesn't have the back molars mm -hmm. on his teeth. So we did that and I sent Mr. Fine, the, we sent all the inmates a copy of the complaint that we sent mm -hmm. to the jail so that they have that for their records and I sent that um, a couple of weeks ago, I can't remember the exact date, but he should have a copy, he should be getting a copy. He didn't have it yet today when I was there, mm -hmm. but the mail in jail is slow. The mail in jail isn't just slow, it's questionable. We have asked for a copy of the letter that they sent to the sheriff and Gordon Smith the ACLU communications director refused us twice. To date, Mr. Fine has yet to receive his copy. We're going to take a quick break right now, and when we come back, we'll hear how well the inmate complaint system of the jail works under the watchful eye of the ACLU jail monitors. We'll be right back. In the government, there's a phrase used to restrict access to information. That phrase, need to know. At FullDisclosure.net, we want you to have all the information you need to be an informed citizen, unlimited access to all the information we've gathered on our TV show, and if you can't watch us on your local cable station, streaming video of complete shows when you want them. FullDisclosure.net, when you need to know the news behind the news. Welcome back to Full Disclosure and our examination of the ACLU and the court ordered jail monitoring project. As a result of the Rutherford versus Bachman judgment, the ACLU is supposed to advocate on behalf of inmates in the LA County jails. With our ongoing contact with Mr. Fine from his jail cell, we had an excellent opportunity to see how well the ACLU is doing its job. Mr. Fine has uh, claimed that uh, he filed a complaint on January 5th <clears throat> and that he wasn't there was no response to it and nobody could find it. He, yeah he showed I, I think that he got a, com a response to that complaint um, like the 9th mm -hmm. was yesterday. Well do you think that or do do you consider it a responsibility of your jail monitoring progress program 
to, to inquire about the status of complaints that inmates tell you that they've filed? Yeah, we regularly follow up on complaints that we have filed because we track what we file and we ensure that there are follow up, you know, there's follow up and we'll sometimes follow up on the response that we get to make sure that it's uh, sufficient. Mr. Fine has filed numerous complaints with the sheriff, most importantly refuting his unlawful incarceration. They seem to have completely disappeared. Is it a concern or is it the uh, policy of the ACLU to try to follow up and locate what's happened to a complaint that appears to be missing or not acted upon? Yes. And how do you do that? I inquire to the sheriff's department um, about what happened, you know, this inmate filed a complaint on this date, he put it in this box, what's the tracking number? There have been problems where complaints just disappear and there have been times when um, I've filed a complaint myself on behalf of an inmate and put it in the box and it didn't get responded to. So. Then what? When Mr. Fine sent a second complaint about his broken dental plate, he was jerked around by the bureaucracy. Yesterday, you know, what happened is that I was, you know, I received a, a notice to go down to the medical department and on the notice it said court order. And I figured, well, maybe this is the ACLU must have done something, you know, to get a court order to have me go out and have my dental fixed. But when I got when I got downstairs, they told me that the court order was just meaningless. Those were just words that they used. And I had a clerk that wanted to have me sign off that we had a discussion with respect to the dental plate. And I said, well, what discussion are we having? And she said, well, sign off that we talked about this. And I said, well, we haven't talked about it. I said, what discussion? said, well, you didn't sign a paper before. And I said, so? She said, well, sign here that, you, that, uh, that you're going to sign this. And I said, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> and so we never had a discussion. I said, if you, and I told her, I said, if you want to tell me that we're discussing you know, my plate and what's going to be done about it, you know, let's discuss it. And she said, no, I'm not going to discuss that. And I said, well, did you know that the ACLU has written you? And she said, no. I said, well, maybe you ought to review your file. She said, I'm not going to do that either. I said, well, then we aren't having any discussions. <laughs> she said, sign here. I said, no. So that, uh, that was the totality of what happened. Mary Tiedemann apparently accepts this as standard procedures in the jail. I mean, my experience is sometimes the inmates are asked to sign stuff as to resolve complaints. It's a f on, their co on the sheriff's complaint form that the inmates sign that they have received follow-up on their complaint and sometimes there's a little bit of um, I don't know if confusion is the word but there's 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 some problems with when the inmates sign that something was addressed and I think Mr. Fine wanted to have or Mr. Fine was being thought he was being asked to sign something before it was addressed and um, so he was he said he refused to sign the paper. He's and an so attorney, isn't he? <laughs> we press the issue. What is the ACLU going to do to help Mr. Fine get some teeth so he can eat? The next step is I'm, we're trying to figure out because there seems to be some discrepancy between with what um, with with getting him to physically see the dentist and get some impressions made on his on his teeth, and um, with what Mr. Fine told me today, and what. Um, you know, was my understanding from the jail regarding uh, getting him to the dentist was a little bit different, so I'm trying to um, see what we can do to get him to the dentist. The discrepancy, as he explained it to us in a collect phone call, we accept his, car, his charges, um, was that they have not yet to date offered to take an impression of his teeth. Yeah, there, I, there was some kind of, I don't, I haven't been able to fully look into it because like I said, I got back from jail about two and a half hours ago and I haven't been able to um, 
to talk to the person at the sheriff's department I need to talk to because they weren't there when I contacted them um, is you know what happened when he was taken to the clinic why mr. F why mr. fine didn't you know think he saw a dentist or didn't see a dentist and why they thought he had refused to see a dentist so um, they like, thought he had refused to see a dentist yes they're saying that to you there was some confusion about what was going on with his impressions. The form letter from the ACLU to Mr. Fine referred him to seek help from four other agencies, the LA County Bar Association, the Sheriff's Department Internal Affairs Division, the County Ombudsman, and the Department of Mental Health. The lawyers in the County Bar Association are all too terrified of Mr. Fine's condemnation of the Superior Court judges to get involved. The Internal Affairs and Ombudsman have basically ignored all of his appeals for the last year, and he was amused by the last referral. Another organization the ACLU is referring you to is the Mental Health Assistance Organization for Patients' Rights. Uh, what do you think of that as a possible source of help? The letter from the ACLU had this disclaimer. If you are seeking legal representation to seek damages from the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department or assistance with a criminal or parole matter, please understand that the ACLU is unable to assist you. It doesn't sound from this letter, it doesn't sound like they're planning on checking on you again. This sounds like they feel the matter is resolved and they've gave you referrals. Is that how you interpret it? Well, I, I, interpreted, I interpreted that uh, that the referrals that they gave me, you are meaningless. And, uh, and it sounds to me like they say that they feel that they resolved, you know, that they resolved the matter by writing your one line, and if they don't hear from me again, then in their opinion, they've resolved the matter. Of course, they don't tell you that their phone line is blocked. Peter Eliasberg offered this response to the people who suggest the ACLU's efforts are not worthy of the money they are being paid to serve as jail monitors. Uh, we, we try to provide the best service we can, but I know that lots of people come to us and hope we'll take their cases, and we don't for a huge variety of reasons. And they will, you know, occasionally I will then read on blogs or other places on the internet, the ACLU is useless. Well, we do a lot of cases, but we don't represent everybody, and we don't help everyone. We have their limits to our resources. With their limited resources, are they doing the best they can? We asked Mr. Fine what he thought. If they didn't hear from you within 10 days of the 25th of January, they could say that everything was fine because they didn't hear from you. Well, they'll make the assumption that everything's fine because I can't get through to their black telephone number. For the news behind the news, wherever and whenever you want it, go to fulldisclosure.net and get programs on topics affecting you weekly updates and alerts on hot topics, video streaming of Full Disclosure episodes. It's award-winning, hard-hitting, corruption-fighting news coverage. And it's only available at fulldisclosure.net. Fulldisclosure.net, the news behind the news. Welcome back to Full Disclosure and our examination of the ACLU Jail Monitoring Project. Suddenly, without a warning, a miracle happened. I would say seven o'clock this morning. Uh, the they came. The jail came to me and said that I had a pass to go to the dentist. And uh, they came and they took me to the dentist. And all of a sudden, the dentist said that they were going to do a mold on my mouth. Now this is the same dentist, exact same person that told me the last time that I was there that he couldn't do anything. And wouldn't, not only couldn't, but would not do anything. It's very, very exact same dentist. And suddenly, he was now doing a mold on my upper 
up her mouth. And in addition to that, he told me that he took my plate and he said that he's now going to fix my plate. What on earth brought about this phenomenal change, we ask him? The only thing that I can think of is that I put in a, um, I put in a complaint uh, the other day uh, which had three parts to it. And one of the parts to it was that, that I was complaining that I had been told that the jail said, that a dentist in the jail said that I had refused to have a mold taken of my mouth. And in my complaint, I said that that statement was a total lie. He questioned the jail sergeant about how this transpired. After I came back, the sergeant, uh, Sergeant Lazy, came in to check on me and uh, to say that he understood that they had taken a mold of my mouth. And I said, yes. And I said, I asked him, you know, what caused the change? And he said, well, the only problem was that it was a question of who was going to pay for this. And I said, well, I never heard that story before. And I said, because that, because that hasn't been resolved as far as I'm concerned, because I'm not paying for it. And, uh, and he said, well, evidently it's been resolved. According to the ACLU, the Sheriff Department sent them an email notifying them that Mr. Fine met the criteria for the Sheriff's Department to replace his dental plate. So the financial issue was apparently resolved within the Sheriff's Department. Yes, that's remarkable. And especially uh, in light of the fact that the ACLU apparently did not have anything to do with it, since they basically said uh, they couldn't, it would take a court order and they couldn't get one. My suspicion is that when my complaint got to Sergeant Levy, that he just sent it right down to the dental people, and then all of a sudden the dental people decided that they had the capability. Meanwhile, back at ACLU, both Mary Tiedemann and Peter Eliasberg expressed their dissatisfaction with the jail inmate complaint system. The fact is, we, we're not thrilled with the inmate complaint no, the process. Complaint, we're very unhappy. No, the inmate complaint fact, system is a big problem. That's something that we've been working on with them constantly. In fact, it's not unusual at all, unfortunately, that complaints are not responded to, or well, either not easy to file or not responded to, in the way in or, or take a long time to be responded to. I wish Mr. Fine's situation again was an unusual it's one. It's not, not. It's actually at all. common. And, I, and it's very common for us to follow up and say. This person has filed a complaint and he has gotten no response. What is going on with his complaint? So this has been a problem for a long time. What are they doing about it besides filing another complaint about the deficiencies of the complaint process? Doesn't the ACLU have any clout in the jail? Apparently a little bit more than a jail inmate. We file complaints with the sheriff's with it like I said it's basically a referred complaint to the sheriff's department but it's through us so there's I think a higher level of scrutiny and there's they know that it's being tracked not from an inmate but from you know from here so those get responses we can take comfort that after almost a month without the ability to chew Mr. Fine may get his dental plate repaired or replaced so that he can eat the jail food once again. Where we are now standing, the dentist in the jail who told me that he could not do anything and would not do anything has now taken a mold of my mouth and has taken my plate and has said that he is going to be fixing my plate. So Mr. Fine may be able to eat while he continues suffering his indeterminate sentence of coercive, solitary confinement for contempt of court, even though he's never been convicted. Why is he doing this, especially at the cost of his career, his family, and potentially his freedom for the rest of his life? Unless we fight this corruption right now, this corruption will erode our entire governmental system. So we have to fight it now and stop it now before it erodes everything. He stands alone in his profession, 
No other attorneys have stood with him to fight the illegal payments the judges are receiving every month. Apparently, they are too afraid to suffer the abuse that Mr. Fine is enduring. We have 208,000 California attorneys. And unfortunately, not one of them has stood up to fight this corruption. That is the level of fear that has been put in to the California bar. And what about the mainstream media? Where is the Los Angeles Times? Where are the network television news commentators? Why aren't they condemning the Judge Payola scheme that has been corrupting the California court system for the past two decades? Why aren't they performing their most important function of informing the people? And the level of fear that has been put into the media, but for what you are doing, with full disclosure, to go in and show what is happening, you're correct. People would not know of this. So it is a tribute to full disclosure that you are going out and you're showing what is really happening. And as the judges move up the ladder from the L.A. Superior Court to the California Supreme Court, the U.S. District Court, and even the Ninth Circuit Court, the corruption spreads. All along the way, we've seen each higher court flagrantly violate due process to protect their brothers in the lower courts. And it's because they all came from the same good old boys club, the L.A. Superior Court. There's no question that with 430 judges, and assuming that most, if not all of them, had taken these payments, I mean, this is probably one of the largest racketeering enterprises going. So we are still searching at this point in time to still find that one honest judge. Still trying to find one honest judge, he remains in solitary confinement in the Los Angeles County Central Men's Jail. We want to know what you, the viewers, think. Is it possible that Ramona Ripston, the executive director of the ACLU, is married to Circuit Court Justice Stephen Reinhardt, and that fact is intimidating the court-appointed monitors of the ACLU from being more proactive in aiding Mr. Fine? Please call our full disclosure town hall number at 1-800-867-7777. That's 1-800-867-7777. And if you leave your name and number, we'll get back to you. Or you can log on to our website at fulldisclosure.net and leave your opinion there. And if you leave your email address, we'll be happy to respond. I'm Leslie Dutton. Please join us next time for another edition of Full Disclosure. Thank you. To respond to this question or comment on this program, please call 800-867-7777 or visit fulldisclosure.net. Transcripts or DVD copies of this program are also available on our website. Full Disclosure, the news behind the news.